Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Vaccaro. I lead the product team here at Thousand Eyes. And at our Branch One event, we want to talk a little bit more about hybrid work and how digital experiences have changed. You know, we know today that digital experience is more important than ever to the way that people work and ultimately to how you serve your customers. But we also know at the same time, IT operations and network teams are dealing with less control than ever before. And at the center of that is the increased reliance on the internet powering digital experiences across users. And so with me today, I have Tarek Zabri from HP Inc. Hi, Tarek. Maybe talk a little bit about what you do at HP Inc. and your roles and responsibilities. Oh, hi, Joe. Um, so I wear several hats at HP, one of which is looking after our strategy, uh, technology roadmaps, and architecture around infrastructure visibility, including network mo monitoring and network automation. So, you know, one of the things that's uh, really interesting to kick things off is maybe to have you share a little bit about, you know, what are some of the key workflows in your business that have changed and how they've changed? Yeah, a lot has changed. So as you can imagine, uh, back in the day before the pandemic, users were able to walk up to a help desk agent, a physical desk, and, and be able to get support right there and have somebody help them. Uh, now that has changed. So the user now has to go to a web page and you would hope that they, they will know that there's a web page and know where to go. Yeah. And then hopefully the network will allow them to do that in terms of performance and hopefully their PC is at a state that allows them to do that. So there's a lot more dependence on technology just to even open, uh, you know, help desk ticket or to be able to talk to somebody that can help them. So this has definitely changed. Um, also, if you think about our contact center agents that are customer facing, a lot has changed because in the past we used to have the majority of our contact center agents were on-prem in our large clusters. Uh, nowadays, uh, the large majority has been remote in the last two years. So we're having to support those contact center agents and to proactively uh, get an idea about how they're performing or how their endpoint and their connectivity is performing because contact center is you know, one of the lifelines mm -hmm. of our company. And also uh, thinking about other workflows that have changed, uh, if you think about collaboration technologies. So we used to have a mix of, you know, uh, in-person, face-to-face meetings in meeting rooms. Meeting rooms have you know, used to be a big component of how we do business. Mm -hmm. um, and we used to also have the remote meetings uh, and using tools like Zoom and Teams and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, now in the last two years, the, the vast majority of our collaboration has been using those tools. So there's a lot more dependence on um, utilizing those technologies, these unified communications and collaboration technologies, which depend on how the endpoint is performing, depend how on how the network is performing, the network at the house, the network you know, at, with the ISP, the network at the head end where the service is provided, et cetera. So yeah, a lot of workflows have changed. Yeah, so in, you know, in summary then, what I've kind of uh, took away from that is not only where people have worked have changed in terms of premier call center workers, how they changed in terms of the adoption and rise of remote collaboration technologies, and then also when things go wrong, how do they get support has changed within your organization. That's right. Yeah. You know, what were some of the typical customer problems that you faced when you started to adopt Thousand Eyes and the endpoint agents and the rest of the portfolio? Yeah, so we, when we started working with Thousand Eyes five years ago, we did uh, both uh, endpoint agents as well as enterprise agents and also including cloud agents as well. Uh, but with regards to the endpoint agents, uh, the very first use case was having to support our executives, whether working remotely or whether they were, when they were traveling, uh, not having, um, the right tools to figure out what's going on with their performance when they're complaining about being able to access something or mm -hmm. the speeds of their connections was uh, was definitely a challenge. And this is when we started looking into the endpoint agents and deploying some of those. You know, so it's now it's not just the executives that are working remotely, but potentially all of your employees. And I'm assuming that created new challenges for remote work, especially as say employees were connecting across, you know, VPNs and ultimately trying to access the set of applications that they required to get their work done. Yeah, actually back at the beginning of the pandemic, we, we had the need to, uh, to get visibility into our capacities, whether it's, it's our VPN concentrators or bandwidth. And this is when we turned into um, Thousand Eyes, actually again, both the enterprise agents and the endpoint agents. And uh, at the time, Thousand Eyes was able to give us a high level uh, view of the performance uh, for, for, those, for those VPN connections. Mm -hmm. uh, but I understand later on, Thousand Eyes developed uh, even, even um, more support for our vendor of VPN, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but definitely this was something that uh, you know we we're able to make use of. Yeah, you know when we think about that same uh, standpoint, we've seen a lot of uh, customers have come to us that says, you know our our employees are adopting um, uh, VPN technologies, 
and they're running into performance issues. You know, some of the times it's as simple as they're connecting to the wrong VPN head end for the optimum performance. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about, you know, inside of Thousand Eyes, how, how do you use the endpoint agent to be able to diagnose digital experience issues and maybe some of the other uh, problems that maybe you've seen that impact customer experience? Uh, absolutely. So I could think in terms of the endpoint agent, I could think of maybe two categories of use cases. So um, there is the reactive or the troubleshooting category where we know that a, you know, a user or a group of users are having um, you know, a connectivity issue or a network performance issue or even an application performance issue. And then we deploy the agent to, to, that, to that user or to that group of users via our automated deployment tool. So that's one category of use cases. The other category of use cases that we're working on right now is to be able to proactively monitor and manage the performance of these endpoints by deploying uh, endpoint agent at scale. This way, we don't wait until a user complains. In this, in the, and in this fashion, we're able to get data about how a particular set of users are performing, get alerts when a particular population is having an issue and such. So that could be very helpful for our, for example, contact center population. Contact center is, is the lifeline of, of our company. Mm -hmm. uh, that can also be uh, very key for enabling our roaming traveling sales force. Um, and when I say traveling, uh, things have changed in the past, uh, but what hasn't changed is that the fact that those individuals are working remotely anyways. So being able to proactively get an idea about a population in a certain part of the country or in a certain country in this case that is potentially uh, having an issue with their ISP, for example, mm -hmm. is something that's uh, very valuable for us. Yeah, that, that integration into your internal systems or on uh, your ITSM or broader operational systems is really interesting. And maybe if you can maybe just share a little bit about what was life like before um, and then what has now changed and maybe how your end users are receiving some of that that new value and new experience. So you mentioned that uh, the IT service management tools and this, uh, this does uh, bring up uh, um, a use case that we came up with internally, the developing an integration between Thousand Eyes and, um, and our service management platform, mm -hmm. uh, whereby uh, when a user is about to open a ticket, open an incident because they're having an issue working remote, working in a, in a coffee shop or at home or what have you, um, before they open that ticket, they get intercepted by a page uh, in our service management tool, mm -hmm. and that page is enabled by Thousand Eyes to where they get visibility into their uh, performance from their endpoint, yeah. uh, but not all, not only that, they also get um, get data from the performance of the nearest office, the nearest HP office. So they get an idea if if it's going to be better. If they're allowed to go to the office, then maybe they should go to the office or from the office. Maybe they're having you know a bad uh, service provider day uh, where they're working at, for example. Um, and that and then not only that, not only that, we also compare this performance to other users that happen to be in the geo vicinity of that user. And, and give give that user a whole holistic uh, idea about what performance uh, difference they may, they may be having comparing to others. That's uh, that's amazing, um, and that ability to really kind of move from a, a reactive to a proactive, and really empowering the end user to take control of the experience that they're receiving. Um, you know, it'd be interesting. You also talked about that kind of geo vicinity or geolocation. Can you maybe describe a little bit more about how do you accurately characterize that issue and then what type of data you're actually sharing back with the end user? Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking here about basic uh, network metrics. So this could be latency or packet loss or jitter or even availability of, of the network at that mm -hmm. location. And when we're talking about other end users, so we, we realize that um, we you know, our users um, work in clusters. Uh, around our, the cities where our you know, biggest populations are. So when a user, let's say a user like myself, is connecting from Houston, Texas, uh, from my house, and I'm having trouble accessing my email or mm -hmm. jumping on my Zoom calls, for example, um, then what the tool does is it's able to pull data from other users in the same area, in this case in, in the Houston area, and average the latencies for those users, latencies to particular websites, uh, also do the same thing for packet loss, et cetera, and be able to give an average for the performance of those users in that geo vicinity based on IP address, and compare those with, with my experience, and compare that, those also with the Houston office experience. Yeah, so now you can really help the employee to answer, you know, is it just me, or is there other people that are maybe having the same issue? And then I'm assuming then from a, from an operational perspective, when users are experiencing an issue, you can help them to identify 
Is it a local Wi-Fi problem? Is it a local gateway problem? Is it a local ISP problem? And then you can begin to cluster and say, these all these employees are experiencing a degraded experience. Hey, maybe they're all uh, connected to the same local ISP from their home. Exactly. So that, that helps us in, in several ways. So first of all, that can prevent a user from opening a ticket because based on the information that's given to the user, we're empowering the users to get access to that information. Mm -hmm. They may decide based on what they are seeing that they need to reboot their laptop, mm -hmm. for example, or reboot their router at home. So this way we get less tickets opened to our service desk. So that's what that's one way we, we benefit from this. And also the user benefits because they, they get back to work you know, sooner because they don't have to wait for a ticket to open, etc. But um, in the case that a ticket is opened, when that happens, then the agent, the help desk agent, will have access to all this data before they even contact the user to work with yeah. them on their ticket. So they would have all this data about about you know their their path, their um, their latencies and their packet loss and all these network metrics and sometimes application metrics as well. Uh, so this way, we enable the help desk uh, agent to be more informed and therefore even when a ticket is open they're able to close that ticket sooner and we end up getting more produ a more productive uh, workforce basically that's uh, that's great and maybe you could just expand a little bit upon you know beyond the help desk you know how else has hp inc really seen value from uh, leveraging thousand eyes Contact Center is, is, is a big organization within, within HP. Um, as, as I said, it is a lifeline for the company in a way. Mm -hmm. So being able to, to provide monitoring capabilities for Contact Center agents when they're working remotely, as in, in the pandemic days, mm -hmm. and even before the pandemic, uh, this has been very key. Also being able to support um, sales applications. Our sales force is quite dispersed and uh, quite mobile as well. Uh, and they use, um, you know, they use an application, a Microsoft application for, for supporting their sales process. Mm -hmm. And that application uh, has so many steps in it, has about 47 steps and maybe 20 screens. And being able to map all this out and create the waterfalls and you know, understand every component on the web page uh, and every, every button that the user presses and where the delays are and where the bottlenecks are have, have been very key. Um, and in addition to that, just our general pop population, including our executives and our, our critical populations in general, manufacturing and, and others, being able to, to tactically deploy endpoint agents when we need it, it has, has been very key in, in, in getting the visibility at the very least. So uh, what we do with this visibility is, um, is, is evolving. Uh, we're trying to create the processes around making the best use of the information, yeah. but at the very least being able to see uh, is, has been very powerful. Yeah, you talk about that, you know, if your employees can't work, uh, they're not gonna be able to run your business. And if your call center can't function uh, because they're having degraded experience, you're not gonna be able to serve your customers and the same thing with your sales team. So, so digital experience is really powerful and critical across every aspect of the way that HP Inc. runs our business. Totally agree, yep. yeah. And then maybe you talked about how, you know, you're leveraging Thousand Eyes and the endpoint agent today across a, a subset of your users. Maybe talk about what are your future direction in, in ways you want to maybe use Thousand Eyes, uh, you know, moving forward. So for the, you know, so far we've been mostly in, in the reactive diagnostic mode. Mm -hmm. So we deploy the endpoint agent tactically mm -hmm. to try to solve the problems that the users are having or yep. those clusters of users are having. But to be able to, um, to, rea to realize the full benefits of, um, of the portal that I described that we developed, which sits in, in our service management tool, mm -hmm. and to be able to be very proactive in terms of getting data about the user performance before the user even complains, mm -hmm. that means that we need to deploy uh, the endpoint agent at scale. So this is one thing that, uh, that we're exploring with, with okay. Thousand Eyes. Well, uh, good thing, Tarek. I know a guy that can help you with that problem. You know, I wonder maybe revisit one other point you made. You talked about moving from this reactive model to a proactive model um, and having the value of having Thousand Eyes deployed across all of your users and using that to kind of establish a baseline. I assume then the value you can be able to uh, receive is identifying kind of anomalous behavior when the experience uh, shifts off of the, the baseline not only that, being able to then compare it to the other employees. Maybe you could just talk about that, as well as maybe what are the, some of the other use cases and applications that uh, you're looking at the experience th through the eyes of Thousand Eyes? So one of them is um, the ability to set up uh, dynamic thresholds for whatever we're measuring, all these metrics. And these dynamic thresholds are set up based on what's normal. So basically the tool is able to, to determine what is um, what's customary, what's what's normal for a particular user in mm -hmm. a particular location, 
And when, when we veer from that normal uh, you know, um, data point and we hit the threshold, this is when we get an alert. And that alert actually generates an incident in our service management tool. Mm -hmm. So this kind of integration is something that we have already in place today. And uh, we like to explore it more and add to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of use cases also, so one of the top use cases for us has been to be able to monitor our unified communications applications. Mm -hmm. So the, the, you know, the two that we use, um, like, like a lot of other large enterprises, the two that's, that are most common in our environment are, are Zoom and Microsoft Teams. And, um, and these are um, very usual offenders in our environment. Uh, well, simply because people use these tools a lot every day, and also because, uh, because they're very sensitive to network uh, parameters uh, more than other applications. Mm -hmm. They're very responsive normally. Uh, we, we call Zoom or Teams uh, the canary in the coal mine because we, um, we learn about network issues sometimes through those yeah. applications. Um, and being able to look into the, the call setup for, uh, for a phone call or for a, for a conference call uh, and being able to look at the payload as in the data that goes through during a call as well in terms of uh, you know, network performance metrics has been very, a very key use case uh, with Thousand Eyes for us. So this is something that, uh, that has, has been um, able to help us in, in several use cases for our sites using both the enterprise and the endpoint agent. So with that, you're able to then um, identify that baseline, alert when it deviates from that baseline, and then you're actually your support team can then actually proactively create a ticket with that end user. So you can almost get to the point where you are reaching out to the end user saying, hey, we know you have an issue, maybe even before the end user really is beginning to experience it themselves. That's exactly. That's really powerful. Exactly, exactly. Even better. So with the enterprise agents, we do that already in an automated fashion mm -hmm. to whereby the support uh, personnel don't even open a ticket because a ticket will be opened and it will be assigned in a queue. What we would like to do with the endpoint agent is the same as well. If we know that there is a cluster of users that's, that's critical to our, to our company, mm -hmm. we want to be able to also open automated tickets when, when these thresholds are, are crossed. Mm -hmm. And then going back to from a you know, conference center and, and leveraging Microsoft Teams, maybe just talk a little bit more about you know, in the past, what were some of the configuration challenges for, for how you would monitor and understand the experience through these UC applications? And then maybe with Thousand Eyes, what, is, what new types of data or how has that changed the way that you look at the experience through those type of applications? One, one example is, um, is being able to determine which, uh, which servers within, let's say, the Zoom cloud that the user should be <laughs> connecting to. So being able to see the full path of, uh, of a call yep. or of a connection to, the, to a conference uh, call um, allows us to optimize that as well, allows us to work with our vendor, Microsoft or Zoom in this case, to optimize where we need these users at that particular location in the world to connect in order to receive the optimum performance. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is definitely uh, one example. Um, so also bandwidth, from a bandwidth perspective, being able to understand what bandwidth needs we have to support a certain number of video connections, for instance, mm -hmm. to support a number of video calls or video conferences from a particular location. That's for the enterprise agent. Now, for the endpoint agent, a similar argument can be done as well. Yeah, so you're able to then extend beyond just troubleshooting and root cause analysis to then leveraging this type of data for broader network planning decisions. Absolutely, in including capacity planning, strategic capacity planning, not, not just diagnostic and troubleshooting information, yes. You know, that's really interesting, um, you know, talking about value and the way that you can move, uh, not only from leveraging it from a troubleshooting use case, but establishing then baselines and then using it from a network planning. Maybe talk a little bit more about, you know, from a value perspective, you know, what are some of the key KPIs that you're measuring inside of HP Inc? And how do you look at this more broadly in terms of the impact it brings to your business? Yeah, yeah, you could think of, um, of two categories, the hard KPIs, as people call them, and the softer KPIs. And the hard KPIs are easier to quantify. Mm -hmm. um, the top one is reduced number of tickets or reducing the number of manual mm -hmm. tickets. We've, we've had um, an objective for the past two years at least, or maybe even more, to reduce uh, human intervention when it comes to raising tickets and opening tickets. So um, with, with, the, with a tool like this that gives us this kind of visibility proactively, we're able to reduce that manual intervention. So mm -hmm. the number of tickets is definitely a KPI that, that we measure and we are measured by as well in, in, in global IT. Mm -hmm. um, and another one is uptime. So uptime meaning um, you know, for systems in general, because uh, we use Thousand Eyes to monitor connectivity in our data centers, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, a 
circuit that's down or a circuit that's poorly or a connection that's poorly performing will reduce to downtime. So uh, uptime is something that's that we we measure uh, very you know uh, in a formal fashion, uh, but not just that. For when I think about end users and the endpoint agents, also mean time to repair is a metric that's that's common in, in our industry as well. So being able to measure. Um, you know how we can get the user back on track and back to to working. That's uh, that's also something that's that's of value, uh, and then the accuracy of whatever we're solving, the accuracy of the solution, because mm. um, the tool doesn't just optimize our resources and streamlines um, and shortens the time to get back to production, but it can also lead us to the right solution. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the tool telling us about how to optimize a traffic pattern or a traffic path, this will will provide you know a more accurate. Uh, depiction of uh, of what we're trying to achieve, and on top of all this, just um, as a soft KPI, just employee productivity in general. Because if if a user doesn't have to call a help desk or go open log a ticket to a help desk, mm -hmm. etc., then we're helping with productivity. And when we are making sure that a user that's sitting at a, at a cafe or at home is able to to work with with a, with a good speeds, if you will, then that also indirectly just leads to higher productivity mm -hmm. in general. And you know, when you think about KPIs from an employee basis or, or say your, your core worker from a call center, are there different ways you look at the key performance indicators for the call center part of your business versus say the other parts of your business? Yeah, definitely we treat uh, call center agents uh, at, a, at a higher priority mm -hmm. than, uh, than our general population. And uh, they have their own KPIs, including you know, the number of, of calls they're able to respond to, uh, including the the number of failed calls that they they, they, uh, they experience mm -hmm. with their with their customers, and obviously with the contact center agent, you know everything is also customer facing, external customer facing, so it carries uh, an additional level of sensitivity. So uh, so definitely all the KPIs that we discussed before, but in addition to that, uh, others related to number of customers, a number of you know instances we're able to respond uh, and to interact with those customers mm -hmm. as well. So I assume then when you kind of go back to that notion of from an alerting standpoint, inside Thousand Eyes, you can group those user segments differently. You can then establish different alert rules for the different user populations. If a call center uh, employee, as an example, deviates minimally off of their baseline, you might want to raise that as a P1 versus say some other employee that's having a different type of an issue might actually go down and drive a different operational workflow in, inside of your support organization. Yeah, definitely we, we take advantage of that um, granularity to be able to set up those thresholds differently for different groups of mm -hmm. users, including in this case, uh, contact center uh, agents as, as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, but also we, we make use of the granular access to Thousand Eyes. So there are support teams uh, for different groups of users and we give them access to what they need to, to get visibility to as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's very helpful as well. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, so in closing, Tarek, you know, I'd love for you to maybe share a little bit about your ambition for 1000 Eyes at HP, and then also you know, some advice you'd want to share with other people who are going to follow you on this journey. Uh, absolutely. So ideally, I'd like to see the endpoint agent deployed at all 70,000 mm -hmm. endpoints that we have in the company. Uh, this way, we can be truly proactive in terms of knowing about potential issues before users complain about them. Um, in terms of advice, given our journey, um, planning is very key. And that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's an understatement. So we definitely have to dedicate, you have to dedicate time to plan and to build um, a responsibility matrix. We call it a RACI matrix, where you're able to identify the different stakeholders and the different groups dealing with, with the technology. Um, also engaging those stakeholders holders right from the beginning, including application teams as well, because you know, uh, Thousand Eyes in general supports both the network and the applications in a way. So being able to engage the right stakeholders from, from the start is, is going to be fundamental. Um, and then our understanding the difference between the, between the use case categories. So you have your external customer facing use cases. And these include you know, being able to engage you know, sales teams, being able to engage application development teams that you know, build those applications that face the customers. And that's on one hand. And on the other hand, uh, the internal IT applications, like you know, the you know, contact center application, if it's internally mm -hmm. facing, and um, you know, things like you know, email, and whatever is consumed by, by the employees internally. And then maybe last but not least, uh, creating the process around the deployment itself 
because this could be daunting depending on the scale that you're going um, with. So if you're talking about hundreds or thousands of endpoint agents to be deployed, and if you're talking about shuffling between different groups, if you have a certain set of endpoint licenses, then you need to have a clear process and you need to think about what tools to use. Like um, we use you know, an automated tool to deploy software, mm -hmm. then you need to plan for that as well. That was great advice, uh, Tarek. You know, and I really appreciate you sharing the wisdom today your journey into Thousand Eyes, but also how people can be able to leverage that widely across these different use cases. And to the rest of the attendees here at the Branch of One event, I hope you've uh, got value out of this and enjoy the rest of the program.